by the desktop development environment. It's provided as a zip file, either on a memory stick or as a download. We just need to copy the contents of the zip onto the hard disk in order to install it. So once that's done, we can start writing our C program. Don't need a zip anymore. Let's create some directories in the sources directory. What we need is a directory called C and a directory called O. This is because RiskOS doesn't use file extensions. Instead, it stores file typed files in a directory called C if it's a C file and O if it's an object file. So if we start writing our code. It's a perfectly normal uh, looking C program. We'll start with int main void, so no arguments passed to our main program. And we're going to have a loop that loops around once every second and does something. So infinite loop within that we need to have a reading of the clock current time and then just wait until that clock has advanced by at least one second so then within that loop we just do nothing just wait Once we've finished that, we come out and print something. So if we introduce an extra state variable here, what we can do is print a different message every alternate time round. So we just need a Boolean value that starts off at true. And then on the first time round, if it's true, we'll print tick. And then when it's false, We'll print talk. So then we toggle its value for flip flop it each time one second has elapsed. And that's our loop done. Now, because we've used printf, we'll need the standard IO library headers. And we've used a clock function which lives in time.h. And we've got a boolean so if we use the definitions in the standard boolean headers as well save that let's call it uh, loopy and save that in the c directory so the compiler knows that it's a c file open and run the set paths application all that's doing is setting up a load of system variables and then run the c compiler front end which sits on the icon bar drag our c program to the compiler run the compiler and save the executable it produced so now if we run the executable we should see something that prints tick tock tick tock every second now to extend our program we're instead going to flash the keyboard led and to do that we need to make a system call and the particular system call we need is in the family called osbyte this is a group of 256 reads and codes that does all kinds of well, menagerie of things and down I happen to know that number 202 is the one that updates the keyboard status so if we look at the page for that we'll see it takes three parameters in the first three registers R0, R1 and R2 and the actual operation is to read the status and it with R2 and exclusive or it with R1 so if we want the numlock LED to toggle, which is bit 2, we want to XOR that every time we go around the loop. So if we get the SWISE header file, that will give us uh, a load of definitions for all the different system SWISE. 
and then the SWIX function, which calls us why uh, on our behalf through from C, calls OSBYTE. The range of registers we're going to pass in are from 0 to 2. That's the reason code, the numlock LED, and 255, so that we're just reading it and ending it with 255. So that's making no change at that point. Now, we'll have noticed that it actually mentioned that that doesn't update the status LEDs. You also need to call OSBYTE 118. So we also need to do a SWIX call to OSBYTE. And this time only passing in register naught, which is the reason code, and the reason code was 118. Okay, done. So save that. Drag the source file to the compiler. Run the compiler. Save the executable. If we run it now we'll see that not only is it printing out tick, tock, tick, tock every second, but down at the keyboard, the numlock light is also flashing every second. As a final variation, we can call the GPIO module to do updates to the GPIO lines. So we're going to use system call 58F83 to first set up the pin as an output pin. Five eight F eight three, and we need to pass in the range of registers from naught to one. We're going to choose pin twenty seven and make that one an output. Pin 27 is just a convenient one that uh, I happen to know where it is on the Raspberry Pi's GPIO header. Next, once, to, once around the loop, we're going to need to set the value with 58F81, which is the right data switch. 58F81. That also takes range of registers from 0 to 1 and we're going to set GPIO 27 and again when the state is high make the pin go high otherwise low. Save that. Drag the C source file to the compiler. Run the compiler. Save the executable. So if we run it now, not only will it say tick, tock, tick, tock at the terminal and flash the LED on the keyboard, if we solder together a 300 ohm resistor and an LED and plug that onto GPIO 27, that one also flashes. <laughs> 